Okay. Can you see my screen? Yes. Do you got the homework in front of you? Yes. Then let's go. Let me take a look. Okay, what type of force or interaction were you showing here? That is an intermolecular hydrogen bond, or a main chain hydrogen bond. Okay. Uh, now, what question was that the answer for? That was number one. What was the question for part one? Which part of the question were you answering? That was... Hold on. Draw an example of an electrostatic interaction between two amino acids. Oh, that's weird. Oh, um, it was. It wasn't that though. It was the. It was the attraction below it. I just drew that on just to show us a beta plated sheet, and then uh, below that there's a um, a lysine and um, oh, a glutamate on the bottom, or not a glutamate. That's aspartate. Okay. All right. So you're saying this is the answer to 1A? Yeah. And this was just a little extra you put in for extra credit? Yes. Okay. Fair enough. Um, so uh, let's look at the extra credit you did here. Now, what is the slogan for make sure you're making sure you're getting the atoms on the main chain correct? Um, nitrogen, alpha carbon, carboxycarbon. So are these main chain atoms correct? Yes. How many amino acids have you drawn there? Well, I didn't finish drawing the nitrogen on the other side. So there's just one, technically. I, I wanted to draw... Um, you mean like one and a half or one and a third and something or something? Yeah. Okay. Let's see. My first suggestion is it's best when you're doing these types of pictures to always draw complete amino acids. It's best when you're drawing these types of pictures to always draw complete amino acids, not kind of one and a third or one and a half. Uh, secondly, so what, what's the slogan again for the main chain? Nitrogen, alpha carbon, carboxycarbon. And then what comes next? Nitrogen, alpha carbon, carboxycarbon. So would you agree there should always be a carboxycarbon next to every nitrogen? Yes. So is this correct? No. Okay. So not only uh, so it's not just that you were drawing kind of like half of an amino acid. We're, we're this is really not drawn correctly. Uh, this is not drawn correctly. Basically, what you have is kind of almost like two amino acids that are sharing the same nitrogen but in opposite directions. Okay. Well, I won't uh, penalize you, so to speak, for the extra credit. Uh, but that's important for when you take the test. My suggestion is, if you're doing this type of picture, always draw complete amino acids and make sure that you're, you're kind of using that slogan to make sure that you got all the atoms correct. Um, something else I would point out, this is not really the way to draw a beta pleated sheet because a beta pleated sheet has to be an extended structure with an extended series of hydrogen bonds at, uh, at every available location. Uh, just having a hydrogen bond between two uh, between two elements is not a beta pleated sheet. I don't know if I quite explained that clearly before, but that, that's a good thing to understand. Um, a beta, uh, in fact, one moment. So here's a picture that your instructor used. Uh, what do you think is the name of the secondary structure they're showing here? Beta pleated sheet. That's right. It's a little hard to see, but I think uh, that uh, these, uh, this ball is supposed to be a nitrogen, alpha carbon, carboxycarbon. 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 And then I think they drew this strand anti-parallel. Nitrogen, alpha carbon, carboxycarbon. Nitrogen, alpha carbon, carboxycarbon. Anyway, the point I want to make is notice that in order to have a beta pleated sheet, there has to be hydrogen bonding at every pair of NH and carbonyl that are pointing towards each other. You can also look at your uh, tutoring notes from when we went over the beta pleated sheet because I drew a picture like that at that time too. So anyway, the point is notice, the, here's there's hydrogen bonding, here there's hydrogen bonding, 
and then the next point where they're close enough for hydrogen bonding is here and here, and then the next point when they're close enough. So every point where the main chain atoms are close enough to hydrogen bond, they're going to hydrogen bond. If we just have like a hydrogen bond every, uh, every once in a while, that's not really a beta pleated sheet. The key thing about beta pleated sheet and alpha helix is that they are regular repeating structures, regular structures. So they're not based on just one hydrogen bond, but a regular repeating pattern of hydrogen bonds. I just wanted to make sure that was clear. Do you see how this picture here is a little bit different from what you drew on the homework? Yeah. Yeah, okay. All right, that's just important to know uh, for, for the exam. So you might want to cross this off in your notes. This isn't a particularly good picture here for a beta pleated sheet, but uh, it, it's good that you, were, that you were thinking about how you might draw that. I have a picture, like I said, in my tutoring notes from when we went over beta pleated sheets that, that draws this somewhat more accurately. Uh, okay, so in any case, uh, 1A, here we do have a electrostatic interaction between side chains, and it is maintaining a tertiary structure on a single strand. All right, so let's take a look at B. Okay. So uh, what type of interaction were you drawing here? That is um, a main chain hydrogen bond in an alpha helix. That's right. Now what was the question for 1B? That was draw an example of an electrostatic interaction between two amino acids that help to maintain pept the uh, peptide quaternary structure. I don't really see that here. Yeah, I thought, um, I think I accidentally heard that it's a disulfide bond for some reason. Okay, well I think this is important, so let, let's try this again on your screen. Try turning on your screen and try to do 1B. Okay. One moment. Uh, have you turned your screen on already? No. Okay. You're still looking at my screen? Yes. So again, let's just briefly check here. Is this main chain drawn accurately? No. Notice again, you kind of have a, one nitrogen that seems like it's being shared between two amino acids. So just to review one more time, what's the slogan for the main chain atoms? Nitrogen, alpha, carbon, carboxy, carbon. Repeat that again. Nitrogen, alpha, carbon, carbon. Nitrogen... Alpha carbon carboxy carbon. And then if there's a third amino acid, repeat it again, please. Nitrogen, alpha carbon carboxy carbon. So the key is every time you write the next amino acid, you have to repeat that slogan underneath your breath. Otherwise, it's easy to make mistakes. Uh, okay, well then let's try this. Uh, try answering 1B on your screen. Okay. What's the name of the amino acid on the top? Uh, lysine. And on the bottom? Um, aspartate. Okay, good. Now, you happened, and you, you showed them as two separate strands, so it looks like quaternary structure. That's good. You happen to have drawn it as if the ends of the strands were attracted to each other. There's no particular reason why it has to be the ends. They could be attracted in the middles as well, but this is perfectly fine. That's a good answer. So it looks like that's a good answer for number, uh, for number 1B, and those are accurate pictures of drawing one amino acid on a strand. Okay, so that's fine. Okay, question two. So this is the right answer for 2A, peptide bonds. Which of the four types of force or interaction is a peptide bond? 
uh, peptide bond is a strong bond, or yeah, strong bond. But what's the specific name? Remember, there's four types of interaction. Four, four valent bonds. That's right. Although those are stronger. Good. So B, C, and D are kind of all the same question. Uh, so you gave the same answer for all of them. And E and F aren't the same question, but they, they have the same answer. Okay, those are good answers there for those. So we have to keep in mind that there's various levels of structure that may, are maintained by different types of bonds. I hope that you'll review these ideas because uh, it would be easy to forget them, but those are good answers for number three. These are good answers for number four. Um, does a protein, does a, does a quaternary structure have to consist of four strands? No. So why is it called quaternary? It's called quaternary because it consists of um, more than one peptide chain. But why is it called quaternary since that stands for four? Because um, both peptide chains... Uh, is it because one chain has a alpha helix and a beta pleated sheet and the other one has an alpha helix and a beta pleated sheet? Uh, no, no, that would be a misunderstanding. Uh, so there's no there's no requirement that they have any particular types of structure. Um, it's just because um, it's the next level of structure that's uh, that was described after tertiary structure. Uh, primary structure is the lowest level, so the next structure was called secondary because it was the next one after primary, and tertiary structure is called tertiary because it's the next higher level of structure after secondary. Quaternary is just called quaternary because it's the fourth highest level of structure after tertiary. It has nothing to do with having four strands. I'm just reviewing that because that was the confusion I thought we had last time. Does that explanation make sense? Yes. Okay. So can you repeat that one more time? I want to write that down, actually. Okay. Well, if it made sense, you should be able to repeat it yourself. Well, what, what do you think I was saying there? It's because I, I wasn't able to hear you that well. Okay. Well, I mean, it, it, wasn't, it wasn't a very deep idea. Do you understand what I'm – you tell me again. Why is it called quaternary? I, all right, I, I'll repeat it. But it's just the idea that the lowest level of structure is called primary because it's the first or lowest level. And then the next highest level is the second highest. So it's called secondary, not because it has two things in it, because it's the second, but because it's the second highest level of structure. And then the tertiary level of structure is not called tertiary because it has three things in it. It's called that because it's the third highest level of structure, the next highest after secondary. And then the quaternary level is called that um, because, not because it has four things in it, but because it's the fourth highest level of structure, the next one after tertiary. So it's, it's, it's called, the number four just refers to the fact that it's the next highest level after tertiary, which refers to a three. Um, once, we see, once we see what the point is, it's a pretty simple idea. Remember again, I made the analogy last time with alpha helix and beta pleated sheet. Why is an alpha helix called an alpha helix? Well, it's just because alpha is the first letter of the Greek alphabet, and the alpha helix was the first type of secondary structure to be described. So it was just called alpha because it came first in and to be described. And then the beta pleated sheet was called that because beta is the second letter of the Greek alphabet. Uh, and it just happened that the beta pleated sheet was described second by chemists, it was described by chemists after the alpha helix was described. I'm not sure if they were described in the same paper or not, uh, but the beta pleated sheet was described second, so it was given the second letter of the Greek alphabet. It doesn't actually have anything that looks like a beta inside of it. It just means alpha for first, beta for second. So quaternary structure is just the fourth highest level right, of structure. Let's take a look. Uh, let's see here. So how, why did you put a plus in this position? Why is there a plus here? Because the um, nitrogen in the N-terminus, the nitrogen group is positively charged. Okay, excellent. I personally like to put the plus then a little bit further to the left to show that it's for the terminus and not for the side chain here. But it looks like you were thinking about that correctly. Okay, good. So um, I think you said this is one of the problems on the exam. So it looks like you probably got this one right? Yes. Okay, great. Well, that's certainly one of the things we worked on in the tutoring. So that's good that that's... Uh, 
that you were able to execute that uh, on the test. And it looks like you still remember that skill. Okay. So I'm looking at the homework problems that you sent me. So here's the answer for question one. The peptide bond is planar because of resonance. This looks like a good answer. It would be an even better answer to actually draw draw the, the electron pushing arrows and show the two resonance structures. Uh, but hopefully this would be enough. Uh, so this was one of the questions on the exam. Um, so hopefully you got full credit for this. Looks to me like you probably got full credit on that question. Um, that's something we actually worked on quite a bit in the tutoring. So it's good that something we worked on uh, showed up on the test. Okay, so what was your reasoning for question one? Why did you pick choice B? Uh, because, uh, because they're hydrophobic molecules. They're one of the highly hydrophobic because they're such big molecules. Okay. Yeah, why are they hydrophobic? Because they have a lot of uh, CH3 groups. Yeah, carbons and hydrogens they have, not necessarily methyl groups. So the point is, uh, they're relatively big. They're relatively big and nonpolar. Hydro the, the hydrophobic side chains are relatively big and very important to be nonpolar. Why would those be in the interior? Because that would be away from the water, which is polar. Great. Okay, excellent. All right. Well, this was one of the uh, one of the problems on the exam. So it sounds like uh, it sounds like you think you probably got that one right. Yeah. Okay. All right, very good. These videos are offered on a pay what you like basis. You can pay for the use of the videos by making a monthly pledge at my Patreon page. Or you can make a one-time payment by using the PayPal donate button on my website. Thank you.